All right, hey, hey, YouTubers. Today is Friday, October 14th, 2022. I'm going to give you a reading update, okay? Um, my video the other day, when I was talking about my October TBR, there was one book I forgot to mention because, I don't know, because it goes out of my head. It was loaded up on my iPad in a reading app. It's um, the Cloud Library app. I use my library card with it. And I had it loaded up. I forgot to mention it. I did read it. I wanted to come and tell you guys. And in the meantime, I read something else. And then I watched a whole bunch of Halloween movies or scary movies. So let's 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 talk about books, right? Um, the one I had loaded up is called The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Now oh, there's its cover. Can you see that okay? I, I, I'm fighting the light again today. The Cabin at the End of the World. Paul Tremblay. It's got a blurb on there from Stephen King that says, Tremblay's personal best, it's that good. Well, I'm a big fan of Stephen King, but no, 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 no. For me, this book was not good. Um, I started it Wednesday afternoon. I finished it Thursday morning after my kids got off to school. I want my eight hours back that I spent reading this book. <laughs> I was so... I gotta tell you, I, I really work hard not to use the word, I hate a book, um, but this one toes the line. Um, I did not like it at all. Um, I was not happy with it at all. I was so angry by the time I was done reading it, and and I don't, I don't like that. I don't like when a book does that to me. Um, not that kind of emotion. It, it's... I don't even know how to describe it. I was, um... On Thursday, I was 60, no, Wednesday, okay, I'm sorry, Wednesday, I was 60 pages into it, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep going with it, because it just, it seemed to be going nowhere, like, like, like the hamster on the wheel, it's running and running and running, but it's not getting anywhere, that's what this book was kind of like, and it's a short book, at like, uh, 233 pages, 60 pages in, I was like, you know, I'm not so sure. So I went and hit the internet. I checked Goodreads and anywhere else I can find book reviews to see um, what people thought of the book and not just the stars. I want to know thoughts and feelings and opinions about the book. And I was reading so many that said, oh, I didn't like it. And oh, I loved it. Okay, but why? You know, tell me why you didn't like it. Tell me why you loved it so I can figure out if I want to keep reading or not. And then I was kind of hoping I would come across a review with spoilers to tell me what this book was about. Because I got to tell you, I have no idea what this book was about. Okay, I really have no clue. Okay, so what didn't I like about the book? Um, Paul Tremblay can write. It, it, it was readable. And I always look for that in a book, right? I read two of his other books. I read Survivor Song about two years ago, I want to say. And it was okay. And then after Survivor Song, I read um, A Head Full of Ghosts, right? That one, that one totally screwed with my head. It totally messed me up. But it was still enjoyable and it was entertaining at the end of the day. That plot was so twisted. And when you get to the end and you get that one other last plot twist, you were like, holy crap. So A Head Full of Ghosts for me was really good. I enjoyed it. So this is my third Paul Tremblay book. And The Cabin at the End of the World, it just, it just didn't do it for me. Um, I didn't like the storyline. I didn't like the plot. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the repetitiveness. And I didn't like feeling like it was all ramped up and we're ready to go, we're ready to go, ready to go. But then it went absolutely nowhere. So did the apocalypse happen or didn't it? You know? And it's just, I don't know, it took me six to eight hours to read it. And I want my time back. <laughs> I really do. I was not happy with this book at all. And it was a complete waste of my time. And one of my goals for 2022 was to read more five-star books. Not more zero star books. So, disappointed. So, if you guys have read The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, let me know down in the comments below. Did you like it or didn't you? Uh, you know, if you did like it, what did you like about it? Because this book has me very confused as to why I didn't like it. It seems like it'd be right up my alley, but 
I don't know, maybe it was the writing style, um, the atmosphere, the plot, the characters, I don't know, but there was just something about it. It just, um, I, I, I really, really did not like it. So, um, to get rid of the, the sourness that this book left with me later on, on Thursday, which was yesterday, I started another book. And it was a short book on my October TBR called Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. Dark Harvest. And I love this book. This book is short at 170 pages and it packed a punch. It totally punched me in the gut and I loved every single minute of this book. It was so good. It is small town in the middle of nowhere. It's Halloween in 1963. This whole town they do this thing where they sacrifice one of their teenage boys to what they call the October boy, which is a bunch of vines that come alive and they have this big pumpkin head that comes alive with the spirit of a boy that died the year before. And I'm not spoiling it, okay, because they, they actually get into that pretty early on in the book. This book was so good. This town sacrifices one teenage boy every year, and that teenage boy takes the place of this entity that comes alive in the cornfield, but with a pumpkin face. But I don't know why the town does this. You know, normally it's because somebody somewhere um, needs something to happen for the town. They either need their crops to, to grow well, or the town to be prosperous, or somebody wanted some power or something. And, and Norman Partridge doesn't tell us any of that. It just tells us how these boys go out on that one night. Their parents actually kick them out of the house and lock all the doors. So the boys go out to find this, this creature called October Boy to kill him. We don't know why. We don't know what started it. You know, how long has it been going on? Has it been going on just, you know, 20 years? Or has it been going on for 200 years? We don't know, but that's okay, because there was so much more to this book, and it, I enjoyed it tremendously. So I read one really bad book that I didn't like, The Cabin at the End of the World, and then <laughs> that same day I read Dark Harvest, and I loved this book. It was so good. The writing is good. The characters are good. Um, um, the atmosphere of the small town is, is good. The pacing, it starts right at the beginning, sucks you right in, and you just, you gotta keep reading. You keep, you gotta keep turning the page. You gotta keep going to the next chapter until you get to the end and it's all done and you're like, um, wow, um, I want more, <laughs> you know? Is there a sequel? Is there a series? And I wanted more, but here it says on the front of the book, now a major motion picture. So I want to know when that happened, because this book is like from the early 2000s. It was published in 2006, and I'm just reading it now, 16 years later. I loved this book. It was atmospheric. It was creepy. Um, it was good. I loved it. So one book I didn't like, one book that I really, truly did like, right? And then a handful of scary movies on TV. So, my husband and I are old school. We still pay for cable TV, right? Um, AMC runs Fear Fest for 30 days, 31 days in October. Freeform, which is the, the ABC Disney Channel, runs um, kid Halloween movies, you know, like Hocus Pocus and Casper and whatnot. And then there's a sci-fi channel that puts on all the weird horror movies and the beef flicks that you wouldn't normally see. So like we've been catching them when we can. So so far I have watched Friday the 13th the remake that was in what 2009 I want to say with Jared Padalecki who played Sam Winchester in Supernatural. So Friday the 13th the remake and then I watched Nightmare on Elm Street the remake. Okay, so between the two, I liked Friday the 13th with Jared in it. I, I did. I, I thought it was, I thought it was well done. Nightmare on Elm Street, it was okay. 
I really, out of, I mean, I really prefer the originals from the 70s and the 80s. Those are the movies I grew up on, but they're, they haven't been on TV yet. Um, so after Nightmare on Elm Street, we watched, and I say we because, like, I watched the first two by myself because they were on in the afternoon. Um, and then by the time my husband gets home and the kids get home, we watched, um, The Conjuring. It's about a house that is haunted and it possesses the mom while, you know, psychologically torturing the people in the house. Um, The Conjuring, it was the first time I've seen it and I watched it all the way through from beginning to end. I enjoyed that one. I thought it was good. It kind of had, um, um, Amityville horror vibes to it. I did enjoy The Conjuring. And then the other night we watched uh, Poltergeist, the original from 1982 two or 83 very in the early 80s so poltergeist with um craig t nelson and joe beth williams looking for um carol ann because she's in the tv with 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 the ghosts that movie is so good even today i think it stood the test of time really really well and when i was watching it the other night i was watching it with my husband and my husband had never seen it and I kept asking him, so what do you think? So what do you think of this? What do you think of that? It's good, right? And um, yeah, he agreed. He said it, it was well done um, with the plot and the writing and the actors. And, and you know, the, the special effects are a little cheesy at this point because it was the early 80s. But Poltergeist, do you guys want to watch a freaky movie that is, is scary? I mean... It, Go watch Poltergeist, because it, it was good. Um, there's a scene in the movie where, because there's three kids, a teenage girl and then the two little ones, Robbie and Carol Ann. Robbie had, he was scared to death. And the little boy doing the acting, when he's like, Mom, 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 Mom. And he starts, it, he was so good. It gives you goosebumps when you're watching that. Oh, I loved watching Poltergeist. And I love that my husband saw it for the first time. Because, like, um, in the house that he grew up in, they didn't watch horror movies growing up. So, um, I get to open up a whole new world for him and introduce him to some of the better movies that aren't all just slashers and blood, guts, and gore, you know. So, um, I've been trying to catch some of the old school, old school classic what i consider classic from the 70s and 80s horror movies this year um haven't seen hocus pocus yet but i'll get to it you know because i love the kids movies too and then um (laughs) last night oh my goodness we watched a movie called within and oh my goodness it was so bad the acting and the plot it was so bad now there was some creepiness to it turns out the house wasn't haunted so it's a guy his his wife and his daughter but um the wife was his second wife okay and and his teenage daughter and they were told that the house is haunted or whatever but it turns out it's not there was a boy living in the walls a teenage boy And all of that was creepy, but the rest of it, um, it was so bad. And the reason I picked that movie, because, like, um, we went through the on-demand menu, because we can't always wait till 10 o'clock at night to watch movies. Went to the on-demand menu, you see a picture of the movie poster, then you get a description of the movie. Sometimes it tells you what actors are in there and when it was released. I picked it because the movie poster and the picture for the movie actually looks very similar to this it had a very pale background and it had a house that was red and i'm like oh my god it looks like the book that i have that i want to read in october it, it so it the movie within that we watched last night looks so similar to this and i thought maybe it would be good or maybe they're related but they're not related two different plots and all but that's all why i picked it it was bad i mean, <laughs> I mean at some point, we just started laughing at it and making fun of it while we were watching it. So, we had fun with that movie. Um, so, let's see. A book I read. I liked a book I read. I didn't like um, the movies I've been watching. Because I like movies as much as I like reading books. Because, for me, movies are just... 
their books in movie form. So I like watching movies as much as I like watching books. Now, you see my coffee cup? Although it's tea in here. You got little bats on there. They say boo. Yeah, it's so cute. Found this at the thrift store for a dollar. Which, okay, brings me to my next thing. The thrift store. To anybody, anybody that is new here, most of my books, like 98% of them, come from the thrift store. Um, I have a shopping problem, and I buy books faster than I can read them. And I was doing book haul videos for a while, showing you all the books that I was buying, but I was buying so many so often that I stopped doing book haul videos. Okay, and I just started putting them on my shelves when I get them home. So, it's October, right? And I'm building my October TBR, but I started building my TBR back in August of all the books that I wanted to read. Or maybe, and, and there's so many more that I have that are on my shelves that I didn't even put in my video the other day because there are so many more. I have anthologies, I have short story collections, I've got some Joe Hill, I've got some Stephen King that could be on there, I've got um, Dean Kuntz, he wrote a book about Frankenstein, it's a Frankenstein retelling, that could go on my TBR, right? But there's one book that I wanted, it is called Clown in a Cornfield by Adam, Adam Caesar, right? I saw it in, I don't know, a booktuber's video because he wrote a sequel to it, um, Clown in the Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives, I think it is the subtitle, um, don't quote me on that though. So, so the new book came out this year, so everybody's talking about the first book, and then they're talking about the new book. And I'm like, okay, you know what, I really like the cover on that, Clown in a Cornfield, right? So, we you know, Stephen King wrote a book called Children of the Corn, and then there's Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and that was a movie way back in the day. And so there's always a thing about clowns, and there's always a thing about cornfields, right? And they're supposed to be scary. And they're supposed to be like Midwest in towns that are in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I was like, you know, I want to check that book out. It looks like it's right up my alley for, for Halloween, for October. So I went to Barnes & Noble in August. And I was walking through there with the kids one day. Well, my youngest, anyway, she loves to go shopping with me. And they had it, and I'm like, yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll get it next time when I'm here. Because I was there looking for manga. I think I was in the manga section that day. I'm like, I'll get it next time. So the next time I'm in Barnes & Noble, they didn't have any copies of it. So, you know, no hardcovers, no paperbacks, um, not the first book, not the second book. They were all completely sold out, right? It's like, well, I'll wait a couple weeks because, I mean, it was, it was August going into September. So I went again in September, and they... They didn't have the, they still didn't have the book, right? I'm like, well, maybe I'll get it next year, okay? So today I decided, you know what? I'm going to go out to Barnes & Noble. I want to get out of the house for a little bit. I want to go stretch my legs. I want to, I just want to go walk and look at books, okay? And I'm like, you know, I'll just take a look, see if they have Clown in the Cornfield. Because I found Adam, Adam Caesar on, on Instagram. I like the guy. I, I like his posts. Um, he's got some spunk to him, and he's got a vibe to him, and I'm thinking I might enjoy his book, right? It's like, you know, I'm going to go out to Barnes & Noble. I'm going to see if I can find his book. See, here's the thing. On my way to Barnes & Noble, I drive through, I drive past two different thrift stores, okay? One's called Good Stuff Thrift. It's in the middle of Langhorne, Pennsylvania, and there's Salvation Army before I get to Barnes & Noble. Behind Barnes & Noble, there's a third thrift store called Second Avenue Thrift. Turn around the corner and go down the road about a minute, and there's a Goodwill. That's all my thrift stores, right? So I'm in, I, I go to Good Stuff Thrift, okay? They have the, they don't have the biggest book selection, but they have the best book selection for a thrift store, okay? So I go walking through there, and I found a copy of... Dean Koontz, okay, he's got a career that's as big as Stephen King's, right? Well, it turns out he wrote a book of poetry. <laughs> we called The Paper Doorway, and I found this at the thrift store. And they wanted $2 for it, so I'm like, you know what, I'm going to read some poetry. Most of the time, poetry goes straight over my head. 
But it's Dean Koontz, and I've been a fan since the 80s, like I've been a fan of Stephen King. Okay, I'm getting to a point here, so just hang, hang with me. I, I like to talk, and I like to tell stories, right? So I'm walking through, and there's um, there's a lot of uh, resellers in my in my thrift store that just they scan all the books on the shelf and throw half of them in their carts, and then they leave the store. And they always leave a mess. So there was a bunch of resellers in the thrift store today. So I couldn't do the adult section first, so I went through the uh, teenage section. And I found um, Orson Scott Card, an Ender in Exile. I read Ender's Game a year, two years ago, and I really enjoyed it. Because I had seen the movie, and the movie seemed good. And when I found out the movie was based on a book, I read the book, and yeah, the book is so much better than the movie, even though the movie, the movie was good. So Ender's Game... And it turns out Orson Scott Card wrote a whole bunch of books about Ender. And this is Ender in Exile. So I'm going to add it to my collection because I'm, I'm building up a collection of all the Ender's game books, okay? And then I found Thunderhead from Neil Schusterman. I just recently picked up The Toll. So here's Thunderhead and hopefully I can find Scythe. So that's um, young adult fantasy, right? Okay. Then I'm, um, uh, so when all the resellers left the adult section, I wound up going backwards alphabetically because my thrift store sorts them by the alphabet. So I started at disease, worked my way up. I found a copy of Anne Rice's Pandora. And I'm trying to go back to my roots with the books that I read when I was um, in my teenage, my late teenage years and my early 20s. And go back to those books that I haven't read in a long time, but I remember enjoying so Anne Rice did um, interview with the vampire, the vampire Lestat, Lasher. Um, she did a lot of uh, books, and I'm when I find them on the shelf, I'm going to start picking up some of the older ones so I could do a reread. And I just I really love this copy of Pandora. It's adorable. Oh right, so um, these two. Ender in Exile and Thunderhead because they're in the middle grade young adult section and they're soft covers. They're only a dollar. Okay. And then the Anne Rice, they wanted two dollars and fifty cents for her. Right? Then I found a Book of the Month Club selection on the shelf. It's called The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. And there's um a lot of booktubers that talk about this. Some of them like it, some of them don't, but it Seems interesting, like I might like it. And, I mean, it's a hardcover of a Book of the Month Club book. Then it's $2.50, right? So right then, I've got a good stack of books. I've got five books going on. I've got almost $10 here in books. And I'm like, okay, well, looks like I'm done, right? But I still had just a few more, few more letters to go in the alphabet, right? So there it is. Right in the C's. Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar, $1.50. So I've made three trips to Barnes & Noble for this book, and I haven't found it. And it was in my thrift store. And I love shopping at the thrift store. You can find so many things. Now, can you always find what you're looking for? No, I got really, really lucky today because I was going to Barnes & Noble to look for Clown in a Cornfield. And I'm like, well, let me stop at the thrift store. I like walking through the book section. I like coming home with random books. And there's Clown in a Cornfield. You guys have no idea how stupid happy that makes me. And the cover on this, it's so got a Stephen King vibe to it. It's got Stranger Things vibe to it. And uh, and that it's a picture of a clown in the cornfield. I don't know if you guys can see that okay. So, um, let's see. Some girl named Quinn wants to make it to graduation, but she might not make it to morning. When Quinn and her father moved to a tiny town with a weird clown for a mascot, they were looking for a fresh start. But ever since the town's only factory shut down, Kettle Springs has been cracked in half. Most of the town believes that the kids are to blame. After all, the juniors and seniors at Kettle Springs High 
are the ones who threw the party where Arthur Hill's daughter died. They're the ones who set the abandoned factory on fire, who spend all their time posting pranks on YouTube. They have no respect and no idea what it means to work hard. For the kids, it's the other way around. And now Kettle Springs is caught in a constant battle between old and new, tradition and progress. It's a fight that looks like it will destroy the town until one homicidal clown with a pork pie hat and a red nose decides to end it for good because if your opponents all die, you win the debate by default. <laughs> A homicidal clown with a pork pie hat and a red nose. This book had better be good. It had better not disappoint me. Or I'm going to find Adam on Instagram and let him know. Oh, I am so looking forward to this. I think I'm going to dig into this today. So, um, $1.50 at my thrift store. And I am so stupid happy. I, I think I'm going to wrap up this video and I'm going to go read a book. Okay. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Jenny Larkin is bookbound. Go, go do a thing at Instagram. Okay. Um, I got my Edgar Allan Poe all lined up and ready to go. I picked four stories, the murders in the Rue Morgue, the fall of the house of Usher, the telltale heart, the pit and the pendulum. And then I picked two poems, the Raven and Lenore. So, I should be doing Edgar Allan Poe sometime this weekend. I've got them all tabbed. Four stories and, well, four tales and two poems. So, that is it for today. Um, I hope you guys don't mind that I ramble and I like to tell stories. <laughs> um, because I'm getting back into the swing of things with doing my book videos. Um, I needed a break for a little bit, but I think I'm good now. I'm going to go read a book. Okay. Um, I'll catch you guys down in the comments below. And I will come back and give you a reading update in a couple days. Because for the next two weeks, I plan on reading a lot of books. And I don't want to wait till the end of the month to do one big long video. So I might do a video every couple days. To give you guys a reading update. I hope you don't mind. Um, so go find me on Instagram and don't forget to like today's video, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will catch you guys later. Bye!